Lonso Meadows, an archaeological site in Newfoundland, was known to have Viking artifacts that predated the arrival of Columbus by 500 years. But the precise date has been a mystery until now. So here to tell us more is CTV science and technology specialist Dan Riskin for another edition of This Week in Science. This is very cool, Dan. How were scientists able to precisely pinpoint the year that the Vikings landed? Yeah, and the best part of this is that the year they pinpointed it to is exactly a thousand years ago. It's 1021, and here we are in 2021 wow. looking back at this. And the way they did it is really cool. There was some wood that had been chopped, and that was at the archaeological site. And the way it was chopped, if you looked at it with a microscope, you could tell it had been chopped with metal. And metal was a technology that did not exist in North America until those Vikings brought it over. And so those axes that cut the wood had to be Viking axes. So we know it was cut by Vikings. The question is, when was it cut? And to figure that out, they looked at the carbon inside the wood and they looked at the ratio of different isotopes of carbon, basically different flavors of carbon. And there's this really funny quirk of history that there was a giant solar storm in the year 993 that changed the ratio of isotopes in the atmosphere for one year. And then the ratio went back to normal. And so any tree growing anywhere in the world in that year put down a tree ring with a weird ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12. The, the isotopes what? are weird for this one year. And, of course, we're just lucky. I mean, it happened like four times in the last 10,000 years that there's been this weird solar storm thing that's messed up the carbon ratio. But it happened to happen 28 years before this tree was cut down. So when you look at the tree rings, the, if you go in from the outside, 28 rings in, you get this weird carbon ratio. And that means that 28 years before it was cut down, it was the year 993, we know that from European trees that have been dated accurately. And so, bang, you know that the tree is 28 years older than or, or younger than the year 993. And that means it was the year 1021. And that's how they figured it out. Dan, if it wasn't you and we didn't just run the sting saying this week in science, I think we were talking about movies because this sounds very Dr. Foster, Thor lands with a big solar flare. Yeah, no, it totally does. And, you know, I love that archaeology and, and astrophysics are coming together on this. I mean, it's like, it really is a nerd heaven to, to find this. And then there's also the, the fun part that it's also, you know, the history of Canada, the history of North America, the history of humans, and the fact that Vikings were here, that they were uh, having trade. There's a lot of questions about what they were doing in that northern part of Newfoundland way back then. Doesn't look like they stayed for a long time. They were there for probably a few hundred years, but it wasn't a permanent settlement. They didn't start a, a a, you know, a city there or anything like that. So, you know, there was trade presumably going on. Uh, also, just what that place would have been like back then. Uh, now it's meadows, but it would have been trees when they first arrived. And, and they probably would have used that wood to fix their boats. And so there's a lot of uh, really cool stuff that goes into this. Okay, so how can this finding be useful for other scientific studies? Well, a little bit, this is a lucky one because of, the, of that weird year 993 that just happened to occur. If, if, if this had happened in a, different, uh, in a different century, that lucky little quirk wouldn't have been able to, uh, to identify the year. So it really does open things up to you know paying attention to every single tool that's at your disposal. But more generally, what it does is it really sets a firm date for the history of what was happening in that part of the world. So that really uh, works as a bookmark for a lot of things that are calculated based on that. Yeah. In in terms of the history of the people there. And it also just shows that, you know, if you're working on archaeology, it pays to pay attention to those other fields of science. Yes. And, and, you know, this is something that's becoming more and more difficult with science is to stay on top of all the fields at once. People become yeah. so narrowly focused on one thing, like the ratio of carbon atoms, that they might not know about an archaeological site. But if those people are talking to each other and sharing information, uh, you know, the, the, it, it really helps the science. And so thinking even larger than that, if you're into one kind of music, it really pays to listen to other kinds yeah. of music and read up on different things, because the more you know from different fields, the more you can do with it. I love that. I'm going to sneak in this last question really fast, Dan. What was the original name of Lance Meadows? Yeah, Meadows is an English word. Lance is handle in French. It has to do with the shape of the bay. It looks like a handle. But some people think it was Lance au Medus, that it was the uh, Medusa Bay or, or yeah. Jellyfish Bay originally, and it got changed to uh, Meadows. So we don't know, but that's the best guess. All right, Dan, always good to have you here. Thanks so much. This was fun. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.